guys and ladies, we want you to know that we appreciate you and we're gathered here today to say that we have your back. We hate what's going on in our country where people are targeting officers and, uh, and trying to make a, a terrible, horrible statement. And so we're here to make a statement that we appreciate our police and we're here for you and we back the blue. Our country is experiencing an anti-police movement unlike anything we've ever seen before. Many are calling for the murder of cops and we've seen these executions come to light. Already this week, five more officers have lost their life in the line of duty. Every 58 hours, a law enforcement officer is killed. More than ever before, we need your prayers and support. We need you just like you need us. I believe with this parting thought, what if this continues? If it does, what if law enforcement says, I've had enough. This isn't worth thirty-five dollars or $40,000 a year. I'm going home. We need your support. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As Chief Harrison so aptly put it, we're here thanking you for paying tribute to the men and women in the law enforcement community, many of which are here. Even more are home sleeping or spending time with their families because they know the next radio call they take could be the most dangerous event in their life. We thank you for this rally. We thank you for continuing to support us. We need you more now than we ever have. Thank you very much. I think I speak for my, my board of directors when I say that I welcome the opportunity to be here today. These men and these women who wear the blues and the blacks are the only ones who stand between us and chaos. We have heard criticisms about our police force. Some I, I feel sure are justified. I'm a former teacher. Not every teacher was perfect, but we couldn't condemn them all. Now, I don't know about you, but I can see enough gray hair out there that I think that there are enough of you who remember as I do. Those scenes that I remember that loom so large in my mind from Mogadishu, when society broke down and a young Marine was dragged through the street behind a pickup truck. And the pickup trucks that had the most big, burly people in the back with the biggest guns ruled. I was at Union School yesterday morning and Principal Forte was showing me around that school, which has come from a performance rate of 10% all the way up to 100% passing and excelling academically and there were little tiny lines along each side of the of the hallways and she said I have been criticized for these lines she said but I'm teaching these students structure because there are lines in life that you just don't step over well good morning everyone I want to uh, personally thank you on behalf of the city of Texarkana, Texas, and the city of Texarkana, Arkansas. Mayor Bell is here this morning and thanking you for your support this morning. This is an outstanding turnout. I also want to thank Ms. Pettit and others who have made this morning possible, and uh, their, their efforts are very much appreciated. Let's give them a round of applause.
We call on law enforcement personnel to assist us in times of need to protect our lives and our property. When we dial 911, help is on the way. Our law enforcement officers must be treated with respect and dignity. A problem we have facing our nation today is the lack of respect for authority. We find examples of this in the school classroom, in our streets, in our homes, lyrics to rap songs, and citizenry, citizenry interaction with law enforcement. I know firsthand what our police officers have to deal with each day when they begin their shifts. From 1979 to 1984, I was an Explorer Police Cadet with the Texarkana, Arkansas Police Department. I logged over 3,000 hours patrolling the streets of Texarkana, Arkansas. I witnessed firsthand what our officers encounter and the challenges they face. I want to share with you this morning that we are very fortunate to live in a community where we have top-notch law enforcement personnel and the leadership that goes along with that. Our officers back up the motto that is displayed on the back of our patrol cars, which reads, dedicated to community service. Our police officers are put to the test every day. I was recently made aware of a local video that a man made on his cell phone. The setting was in a residential neighborhood and begins with the arrival of two patrol cars that pulled up in front of the residence. It was quite evident to me the person shooting the video was trying to entice officers into saying or doing something that would have enabled him to cast the officers in a bad light. The officers were very prompt and professional when interacting with this man. A true example of professionalism at its best. And I also want to thank the spouses of our law enforcement officers who make their own sacrifices each day to support our law enforcement community. They tend to family matters when their loved one is on duty and they are there with open arms when their loved one returns home. And once again, thank you all very, very much for being out here this morning and participating in this event. Hope you have a great weekend. I stand here today in awe, as always, at the amount of support that is given to my family from the city of Texarkana and the surrounding areas. You guys are a testament to what is right in the world. So often we see, and I'm to blame as well as I'm sure most people here, we say what's wrong in the world is, and we fill in the blank. There's so many things that we can say are wrong in the world, but today you stand here as an example of what is good. You are a reminder to me and my family when it's really difficult to choose happiness on the days that are just sad or difficult, you are a reminder to us to choose happiness. And not only are you a reminder to my family, but you are a reminder to all these officers who are here and to their families as well that they are supported. Jason was an officer for many years, that's, that's the career he chose. He felt he was called to do it. And thankfully throughout the majority of his career, he was supported by his administration, by the citizens from where he, the towns in which he worked, and from his family. It's been since Jason's death that there has been a decline in society, a noticeable decline. And we talk so often in the law enforcement world about the silent majority. 
the people who support us but don't know how to support us. And today, you're an example of what it means to no longer be silent. We need your help more than ever. And you don't have to truly understand what it's like to be a law enforcement officer. I spent years as Jason's wife seeing him deal with the worst of the worst in society, and I still don't really know what it's like to be a law enforcement officer. But I do know that we don't have to understand what it's like to be grateful for what they do. Amen. And so often I feel like as a society, you don't know how to say thank you and you don't know what to do. You're, you're a little uncomfortable with going up and starting a conversation. You don't know what that officer dealt with 10 minutes before or what he's going to deal with in 24 hours later. But what you can do is just say thank you. And I, I assure you, I heard so many stories of gratitude, and I have since Jason passed away heard so many stories of just simple acts of, of kindness that you do. And today was started in an effort to, to continue that idea that we no longer have to be the silent majority. And so today I want to say thank you to these officers who are here for being your brother's keeper. And now I think it's, it's fitting that we also take note of those officers in Texas and Arkansas in 2015 who have given the ultimate sacrifice. We say in the law enforcement world there is no such thing as a routine call and these are examples of that. And we're now going to take a, a small time to just give thanks and honor those officers and those families who have given the ultimate sacrifice. So we're going to, I'm going to read the names and departments of those who have been killed in the line of duty in 2015 from Arkansas and Texas. And Chastity Russell, the president of Pink Behind the Thin Blue Line, is going to release a balloon in honor of that officer and his family. We're going to begin with Arkansas. Reserve Deputy Sonny Smith. Johnson County Sheriff's Office, Arkansas. End of watch, Friday, May 15, 2015. K-9 Titus, Little Rock Police Department. End of watch, July 15, 2015. From Texas, Correctional Officer V. Christopher Davis, Department of Criminal Justice, End of watch, Wednesday, January 14th, 2014. Sorry, 2015. Correctional Officer, Elgio Garcia, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, Wednesday, January 14th, 2015. K-9 Pepper, Wise County Sheriff's Office, Wednesday, January 28th, 2015. Patrolman Adrian Arleano, El Paso Police Department, Wednesday, March 18th, 2015. Police Officer Michael Villarreal, Parasol Police Department, Sunday, April 12th, 2015. Police Officer Richard Martin, Houston Police Department, end of watch, Monday, May 18th, 2015. Sergeant Christopher Kelly, Hutto Police Department, end of watch, Wednesday, June 24th, 2015. Sergeant Corby Ke Kennedy, San Angelo Police Department, Thursday, June 25th, 2015. Correction Officer Timothy Davison, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, Wednesday, July 15th, 2015. K-9 Jola, Jim Wells County Sheriff's Office, Monday, August 10th, 2015. Detention Officer Jones, Harris County Sheriff's Office, Thursday, August 20th, 2015. And one that I'm certain we are all familiar with, Deputy Sheriff Darren H. Goforth, Harris County Sheriff's Office, Friday, August 28th, 2015. And now let's take a moment of silence just to 
give respect and honor to those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. And now Chastity Russell, the president of Pink Balance and Blue Line, is going to follow me.